Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about the question, is medical billing and coding school hard? If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been getting lots of emails asking this question lately. Uh, I wanna get into medical billing and coding school. I don't have any background in medical. Is this going to be hard? Um, I'm a little older and I wanna start doing something new. Is the coding school going to be difficult? So I'm gonna get into it today. <laughs> um, but I will preface this whole video with this. Obviously, I haven't been to all of these programs. I've been through a trade school in order to get my certification. Um, the trade school that I went to is no longer there, but they had an online program that prepared um, the candidate for either the American Health Information Management Association or the American Academy of Professional Coder credentials. So I chose to go with AHIMA uh, because that was my own personal choice. Uh, I know good coders with both associations. I generally don't advocate one, or, one over the other, um, but I, I will say this, both associations offer unique features. AHIMA though is the oldest and longest running and most steeped in history. So that is one of the reasons that I picked them and I have other personal reasons that I picked them for myself as well. But uh, if the program that you're in, hopefully the program that you're in is training you for the American Health Information Management Association or the American Academy of Professional Coders, um, it needs to be training you for one of these association credentials because that is how you know that the this teaching is going to be, I don't wanna say genuine, but it is going to be at a level that is going to get you prepared to take one of these certification exams. There are many programs out there um, with other associations, uh, but if you are looking seriously at being a medical biller and coder or even just a medical coder, you have to be certified with the American Health Information Management Association or the American Academy of Professional Coders, one or the other. If you're not certified with them, it's going to be an uphill battle for you to get a job. It's already an uphill battle <laughs> for new medical coders, um, but you have to have the correct credential in order to be able to get in. And being certified with one of them is the best way to start out. So I will say that. Um, I will also say this, if you have no background in medical, that is totally fine. But know this, you are going to be in for a lot of studying, which is why I say medical billing and coding school is not easy. There's a lot of people that try to sell these programs and they say, oh yeah, it's easy. You can learn this in your spare time. <laughs> no, no. Uh, this is something that is going to take dedication. And even if you are working, you still need to uh, carve out time for yourself to learn this. If you are truly serious about being a medical coder or a medical biller and coder, uh, you need to know that taking the time to learn this stuff is going to be really, really crucial in order to get you the success that you want. Now, I didn't have any background in medical. Um, I, I completely started out <laughs> no no desire, no nothing to be in the medical field. A lot of people are coming in from other, other branches of the medical field, but for myself, I didn't have any background. I was gonna be an attorney <laughs> when I was a kid. So that was my whole life was researching and learning how to look things up. It came in handy <laughs> for my career as a medical coder, but uh, not completely not knowing. I thought that medical coding had everything to do with needles and I wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, but when it was explained to me, I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe I can do this because it's a lot of reading. And I will say that also, it's a lot of reading. It is a lot of studying. It's not just being in the school that you're going to have to study. It is going to be a continual learning process. I've been a medical coder for over 10 years now, and I'm still learning. <laughs> I still study every week as well. Um, on top of doing the videos for you guys, doing the videos for my Patreon channel uh, and all the other things that I do, I still carve out time to study. So uh, if you are working or if you have a family, you still need to work out time so that you can study. A lot of times these um, schools will say, well, um, I've had <laughs> some people write in and say that the school told them, oh, all you need is just one hour per day to study. If they're telling you that, uh, you need to be studying a lot more than that. Um, it is it is very critical, like I said, to put 
as much time as you possibly can into studying. You have to learn medical terminology, anatomy and physiology, about HIPAA. You have to learn about medical law and ethics. And that's before you get into the coding part. The coding part, you got to learn the guidelines. You got to learn the rules. You got to learn uh, <laughs> just the different uh, things about some of the codes. And then you got to learn about the procedure coding. And then if you're going to learn on the inpatient side, you have another procedure book to work with as well. So there's a lot of things that go into learning. If you're going to start out, you know, starting out in the outpatient side, you're working with the CPT book or the current procedural terminology book. Um, that's all your procedures that they perform in the outpatient setting. Uh, then you have your ICD-10 CM. That is your diagnosis book. And that is also what you're going to be learning. You have to learn those guidelines forwards and backwards. Uh, with evaluation and management, that is part of your CPT. Uh, that just went through a change. So there's a lot of new things out about evaluation and management. It is not as um, difficult, <laughs> I think, as from before where you had to have all these points and bullets and things like that. Uh, it is very much straightforward now. Uh, I think as people get into it, it's going to be a lot more easier for them. But it is very, it's a very interesting process now with evaluation and management. Uh, but that's further down the road. So if you're, <laughs> if you're thinking about getting into a program, I know some of what I'm saying right now may not make sense to you, but this is what this industry is about. Uh, it's so much studying, guys. And there is no math involved in medical coding. A lot of people will ask me that as well. Do I have to be good at math? No. What we have is basic add plus plus minus type of math because um, there are certain things in the in the procedure book that you got to add up or you, for the um, for the wound areas and things like that. So that's when those things come into play. Uh, but what we do is not complicated math. All right. It's just very simple, straightforward math. It is not hard. <laughs> so if you are not good at math, don't worry about it. You know, it's it's no big deal. OK, so it is a matter more of reading comprehension. If reading comprehension and reading is not your thing, that is 90 percent of what medical coders do is read. And we have to our reading comprehension has to be stellar. I mean, it, it really has to be good because in order to understand medical documentation, Medical terminology, anatomy, all of these things come into play when you're trying to interpret this documentation. Yes, there are some times when the provider will select codes on their own, but it doesn't necessarily mean that these codes are correct. Uh, more often times than not, if the provider has not been trained and they are uh, trained by a good hands-on medical coder, uh, they will select codes that um, yes, there's codes for whatever they're performing in the book, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that applies to that visit. So there's going to be times when you're going to have to change the codes. Um, one of the mistakes that coders make in the beginning is taking for granted those codes are already selected and sort of trying to push them through. Uh, but that's going to be another topic for another video. <laughs> um, right now, I just want to talk about the school part of it. Uh, carving out time to get all the study in that you can is crucial because of this, okay? Uh, so really understanding all of the, uh, the words, the medical terminology, and medical terminology does scare a lot of new students. I will let you in on a little secret. <laughs> With medical terminology, you are not going to have to remember an entire medical dictionary. What you need to do is Remember your prefixes, your suffixes, and your root words. When you start learning those, you're going to be able to piece together uh, different words and bigger words and more complex words because you know the little parts of the word so you can add them all together. And just like when we were kids and we were growing up and learning all of these words and these compound words and things like that, uh, it's, it's the same thing when it comes to learning medical coding, because we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. That is one of the most frequently said things that I say on my channel <laughs> is we have to know this stuff. And the vast majority of 
Coders are not doctors. There is a very small percentage of doctors that have also their credential as well because they want to make sure that they're getting paid appropriately. And I like co like uh, coders. I like doctors that are very hands on like that. Um, and some have gotten to that point where, you know, they say, well, I'm going to get my own certification myself because I want to make sure that the coders are doing what they're supposed to do, because sometimes coders, especially if they're not trained properly, uh, if, if they haven't taken the time to do research on their own, they're going to run into things that they don't know and they don't understand. So um, the doctor doing that for themselves is an extra insurance policy. <laughs> However, you will have a vast majority of doctors who will say, I don't want to I don't want to learn this stuff. You do it. <laughs> You're the coder. And they put their trust in the coder. And in, in my in my case, for my providers, they put their trust in me. And this is something that I take extremely seriously. And they know this. Uh, and because of this, they perform very well. They're educated constantly. Anytime there's anything new, I'm right there to let them know about it. And I laminate the sheets for them. And I take the time to uh, stop what I'm doing, answer their questions. Because those are the different components that make being a medical coder the whole package. You have to be the whole package. And that is something that you can look forward to <laughs> when you get out of school. Um, but being in school and your definition of hard or difficult is going to be different from somebody else's. But if you already go in knowing that there's going to be days when you're going to be like, do I know anything? Am I ever going to get this? <laughs> yes, you are. But the key to adult education is repetition. And that is one of the things that you're going to have to learn how to do, especially when you're in school, is take that time to uh, to do your flashcards. And I'm going to bark about the flashcards again because a lot of people will ask me, I don't want to do flashcards. I don't want to make them, but I want to get them. If you want to get them, like a, get a deck, uh, that's totally fine. I leave um, the Amazon links. You don't have to click on them uh, because if you do, then I get a percentage of every time you click. But it, you, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I'm just letting you guys know. I do put the title, though, of like the flashcards that I recommend. Um, so that way, if you want to, if you don't shop on Amazon and you want to go look someplace else, that's totally cool. You know, uh, those are just some of the ones that I recommend. Um, but I really do recommend doing like handwritten flashcards, especially when it comes to medical terminology, doing your prefixes, your suffixes, and your root words, uh, doing those and making those flashcards so that way uh, you can engage your mind and body into you know, what you have to learn. Because the more you do that, the easier it will be to recall. And when you're doing things to make it easier for you to recall, it will be a lot <laughs> better and much more efficient for you to get through things that you may find a little bit more difficult. Okay, so that's my advice on that. Um, you have to surround yourself with positive people when you are in school. Because if you get into one of these programs and then all of a sudden you get around people who who start to doubt themselves and who say, I'm never going to get this. And, oh, I heard from so-and-so that um, they haven't gotten a job. People don't get jobs. And this is a scam and a waste of money. It's not a waste of money. And people do get jobs. Every single one of us that's in the field now that is a veteran coder has to have started somewhere. But it depends on the person and it depends on how stubborn you get. When it comes to getting through the school sitting for your certification exam, passing your certification, and then getting out into the real world and applying for jobs, you have to be stubborn. It took me two months to get a job, but I applied everywhere and I had the door slammed in my face so many times, um, but I didn't give up and you can't because after you've invested all that time <laughs> into learning, into uh, getting your certification, and then just to give it up because you can't find a job, um, is, is very heartbreaking. So uh, I've, I have many videos about um, my advice for those that are out there in, the jo in that horrible job seeking <laughs> process right now. And it's, it's just one of those things that you have to know how to navigate, you have to know how to maneuver um, during that time, but you can get it if you stick with it. So um, the only way to fail is to actually give up, right? And so that is <laughs> my advice for that. 
Um, but sticking back to school, um, get around people that are like you. If you start getting around people that are negative, run. Because negative people are only going to bring you down if you stick with that. Because people's energy is contagious. I'm a very firm believer in that. If you get around negative people, then all of a sudden that negative seed is going to start planting. And then you're going to start second guessing yourself. And did you get the right thing? And did you do the right thing? Or, you know, all this stuff. Don't do that. Okay. You are on this journey for a reason. You want to be a medical coder for a reason. There is a reason that you want to do this. Stick with it. And when the going gets tough, do not run. Push forward and, and really go into it because that's when you're going to be just, just right, you know, right before you hit that, that perfect spot where you're just like, okay, now I got it. <laughs> but you have to stick with it in order to get that. So um, I want you guys to think long and hard before you start a program. Uh, yes, it is going to be difficult, but it is a good difficult. This is probably, if you do it correctly, right? As far as like correctly, meaning that you actually work all the way through the program and you don't give up. Um, it is going to reward you because you're going to get your certification at the end when you take your certification exam uh, and when you pass it. So uh, stick to positive people. Uh, also, if you are in a Facebook medical coding group, I strongly, strongly say all the time, get out of Facebook medical coding groups because a lot of times they are negative. I have had comments before blue. I'm in a very positive, um, uh, Facebook medical coding group and everybody supports each other, but, uh, <laughs> there's always going to be those seeds of negativity somewhere in those groups. Uh, I have yet to see one, uh, mostly the ones that I hear from or the ones that I've seen have been horrible. They've been very negative. And when you get around people like that, it just, it can just steal so much joy and steal the joy out of being in school. You know, especially when as adults, right, you make the decision to go back to school is huge, you know, uh, and sometimes you are the only one who believes in you because maybe your family may not understand. When I was in school, I was around a lot of ladies and their families didn't understand and <laughs> they had their relatives and their spouses telling them that they didn't think that they were smart enough to do it, which I think is horrible. It's horrible to do that to an adult, especially somebody who is um, not quite sure of themselves just yet. You know, they need all the support that they can get. And so um, I, you know, I always try to be as positive as I can and, and encourage people if that is truly what they want to do, because you won't let anything stop you. If that is truly, if medical coding, medical billing and coding is what you want to do, you'll do it. You'll find a way. You will do anything and everything and nothing will get in your way. Uh, that's the attitude that I had to have when I was in school, uh, especially at the end when I got my certification and I was out looking for a job, I could not let anything stop me. I literally couldn't let anything stop me. It was just like, okay, you know, um, they told me no. <laughs> All right, I got to go to the next one. Uh, you told me no. Okay, I got to go to the next one. But I never gave up. And so that is the total message of today is that if you're going to go to these schools, be prepared. It is difficult, but don't give up. And when you get out into the real world and you have your certification in hand, don't give up because there's going to be a lot of that in the beginning. And that's it's it's something about the industry that I really wish would change. So <laughs> I use my channel too to tell the people that are getting their degrees that if you are in a position of leadership and in your facility, you have some rule about that. Oh, you got to have three to five years. I always tell my audience to give new people a chance. That is the thing that I really wish would be a lot easier because I think so much talent gets thrown away because some people just give up because they don't know, you know, and sometimes they don't know. You know, I, I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> if I would have known uh, back then how to find a job, I would be like, this, this would have been a lot more quicker to get in. But I didn't know. I had to learn the hard way. And YouTube medical coders on YouTube wasn't a big thing back then either. Um, YouTube really wasn't big 
uh, for like this kind of thing either. So that is <laughs> that is something that, you know, from that time and I was in school over 10 years ago. So, you know, of course, sorry, <laughs> somebody's lawnmower anyway. <laughs> but uh, I I hope that if you are excited about school, that this is encouraging for you because um, the reality is a lot of times when these schools are getting sold, they'll say, well, yes, it's easy and yes, you can do it. Of course you can. You can do anything that you want to do. But I also believe in telling people the truth that this is a challenge, that to learn it is a lot. And there's going to be times when you're going to question yourself and you're going to think, do I know anything? But if you stick with it, you're in for a big reward. You have a wonderful career if you stick with it. Um, but it's all on you. It's all on the individual. So um, that is my advice for today. Uh, I will be doing um, filming for uh, Letters to Blue for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, well, to Thursday, it will be the show Letters to Blue. Uh, I take all the letters that come in and I sort through them and I... Uh, read a few of them for my channel, which will be airing tomorrow, uh, 7.30 Central Standard Time on Thursday, uh, Letters to Blue. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, have you hit that like button? Have you shared this? Uh, I hope that you do. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope that you do. Subscribe. And uh, that way you don't miss out on any of this content. And uh, if you are brand new in a program, uh, let me know what certification you're planning to sit for. Comment below and uh, we'll just talk about it. All right, so I'm going to wrap this one up. So I will see y'all on the next video. Bye.